Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Kansas, the Tier 7 Alternate Line American Battleship. Now, the Kansas, after its release, has received a few buffs, mainly to its reload and its main battery accuracy, which now makes the Kansas a very dangerous threat, especially if you are showing the ship any sort of broadside. This ship having 12 406 mm guns means that this ship has the heaviest broadside at tier 7. So this ship will definitely punish anything that it looks at. In this game, I am using my William Sims Sigma build, so the Kansas's Sigma is closer to around a 2.1 Sigma, and using a spotter plane will get that around 2.3. I have been using a Sigma build on pretty much any battleship that I am using the Dispersion Commanders for, or the Hybrids, mainly because Sigma does increase the consistency of your main battery guns, because Sigma is the probability that the shells will land in the center of the Dispersion Ellipse, which essentially means your shells will go where they land. When I shot at that Fletcher, you could have seen the Dispersion being absolutely insane, with how tight the grouping was, I did overlead a little too much, so I didn't exactly smash the destroyer, but you could see just how tight all the shells were, because they were all pretty much landing where I aimed. So definitely more of my poor aiming instead of bad dispersion. Now with the destroyer smoked up, I do decide to try and push in, especially with this enemy Massachusetts also pushing in. With him being behind this smoke screen, I can definitely try to push up further, and if I'm patient enough, I can possibly find a broadside as he angles towards the ships in the middle of the map. This is a fairly risky play, especially considering there is an enemy carrier in this game, so if I get spotted by planes, their enemy destroyer will definitely start torpedoing and farming me. As I predicted, the Massachusetts does turn in to angle towards the ships in the middle, and I actually am able to get a Citadel on the Massachusetts and pretty much chunk him for all of his HP. That simply showcased the punishing broadside if you are ever caught by a Kansas, and it's also a fairly decent example of how to find your own crossfire. Although ideally, you wouldn't really be pushing in towards where you know there is an enemy destroyer in a smokescreen. With their Massachusetts gone and the enemy destroyer sitting in his smoke, also with no carrier spotting me, I decide to push closer to the smoke, so when his smoke runs out, I will be able to spot him and absolutely smash him with my main battery. Unfortunately, I do get spotted because there is a destroyer in the middle cap, so I definitely know that the Fletcher is looking at me and will be launching some torpedoes my way. I do decide to start turning and the Fletcher actually gets spotted trying to leave his smoke. I do try to turn my ship in order to get my back guns off. However, this will turn out to be a mistake and me simply being greedy and I will eat three Fletcher torpedoes. This is mistake number one. Mistake number two is using my repair party when I can't exactly heal that much, so I wasted most of this repair party and it simply was not effective in restoring much of my health. With this Fletcher spotted, I do want to try and keep pushing him in order to not let him escape, but unfortunately this extremely long Kansas reload does not allow me to get another shot off at the Fletcher and he escapes behind the island. An enemy Vladivostok is pretty much flat broadside and reversing, so I take aim and I fire a salvo at the Vladivostok across the map, who is not really paying attention, and I am able to score a Citadel, and also some penetrations for a 20,000 chunk. As I look in front of me, there is actually a smoke screen that is there now, so I know the enemy Akizuki that was last seen in the middle of the map is now in front of me, and he is simply going to start farming me. Currently in my position, I am pretty much in the open, and my best play is to try and find some sort of cover in order to not take as much damage. The enemy Fletcher is farming me over the island, and our friendly destroyer on our right is struggling to finish him off. 
and now the enemy carrier shows up in order to start dropping some bombs on me and I have quickly lost a lot of my HP due to fires and this Akizuki simply farming my superstructure. The Fletcher is somehow still alive even though he was on very low HP. When he got spotted again, he does start going forward and if you want things done, do it yourself. I am able to kill off the Fletcher and the Summers on my right was just simply struggling in order to finish him off. Looking at the map, we do know there is an Akizuki in front of us, and now there's also an enemy cruiser that is making his way over here. It was an enemy Miyoko, so I'm expecting him to start turning out and kiting away, spamming some HE. So I want to try and stick next to this island in order to get some cover if I need to. I do only have one repair party left, so I need to be careful and conserve my HP. The enemy Akizuki gets spotted, however my front gun's dispersion was pretty bad and then my rear guns were good, however my aim was bad. So we end up doing barely anything to this Akizuki. Our friendly Summers is going out towards the border and based on how much help he was with the Fletcher, I am not really expecting much. The enemy Miyoko is pushing out pretty much broadside right in front of us, so we do want to try and kill him off because he is the bigger threat. He is turning out and angling slightly, so we will definitely be able to get some pens. We are able to get him for most of his HP, but we didn't get any citadels. Angelo Iachino's inspiration when shooting at cruisers giving you that extra shell grouping, or in this case Sigma is always very helpful especially with those cruisers that like to kite very far away. The Miyoko turning out does eventually eat one of the Summer's torpedoes and now the one threat that would simply burn us down is on no HP and I will definitely be able to kill him off. We end up getting a Sitter though there when he pretty much had no HP. Pretty much how World of Warships Legends usually goes Especially with cruisers, when they're full health and broadside, you never get any citadels, but then when they're on very low HP, the citadel shows up. Most of this game has gone by, and we're actually tied with the enemy team on points and ships. Definitely one of the more rare games, considering most of them will usually be steamrolls. This friendly Fiji does set me a smoke screen, which I was actually surprised. I am very thankful, however I do not actually recommend smoking up battleships, because in order for them to usually deal damage, they have to shoot their main guns, and smoke firing penalties for battleship are just such a long range, usually they will always be spotted. I do try to make use of this smoke screen by just simply sitting in the smoke and letting my will to rebuild out heal this fire. I do almost eat a torpedo that was meant for the smoke screen. If you're a battleship and in a smoke screen, you will typically be a magnet for torpedoes. So it's a good thing that the Fiji just simply set the smoke screen and left. Otherwise, the torpedoes may have hit him. It's always a good rule of thumb if you set a smoke screen for a friendly ship that was previously spotted. If there are other ships that have torpedoes around, you definitely don't want to set the smoke screen for your friendly ship and then also sit in it because then you will most likely eat the torpedoes that were definitely not meant for you. As the fire runs out, I do start pushing out of the smoke screen and start shooting this Caracciolo that is sailing broadside. For some reason, our friendly carrier is in the middle of the map, and he is definitely putting himself in danger. I fire a salvo at this Carciolo, however, I am not actually able to kill him off, and our carrier is still in danger. I do keep pushing towards this Carciolo because I need to try and make myself a target for him instead of our friendly carrier. As our friendly CV is dropping the car Chilo, he actually ends up spotting one of the enemy destroyers. So now I definitely do need to be very careful because that Austerio limit does have some very fast torpedoes. And me not being on very high HP, 
the torpedoes, even though they don't deal a whole lot of damage, are definitely going to be more than enough to kill me off. We are finally able to kill off the enemy Carciolo, and our CV is sailing away from the Osterjotland. However, I am spotted, so I know that he is somewhere off to my left. The middle cap does end up getting contested, so I know that he is somewhere in the middle cap and extremely close, which is a bit uncomfortable, so I do start turning out in order to try and dodge any torpedoes that may have been launched as soon as he got to the corner of these islands. I ping the map, and our carrier actually does go to try and spot the enemy destroyer flying towards the destroyer. He's actually able to spot some torpedoes that are going for him, so I know that I am safe from torpedoes, so I do turn back in in order to try and get some more shots on this enemy Osterjotland. That first salvo did chunk him for about half of his HP, and I am certain that my next salvo will definitely be able to kill him off if I am able to aim it well. Unfortunately, again, with this longer reload for the Kansas, an enemy destroyer does get behind an island just in the snick of time. I am assuming this Osterjotland is thirsty for a kill, especially on an enemy CV, so I'm expecting him to come around the corner. Being only plane spotted right now, I just need to wait for the icon to change to an eyeball, and there it goes so I know he is now around the corner. He gets spotted by our friendly carrier, and I wait for him to make a turn and show some full broadside, which he does in order to dodge those torpedoes, and we do kill him off. We now have 4 kills and are at 192,000 damage with an enemy CV that is left. Judging by where our friendly ships are, and where the enemy planes were coming from, I am thinking he is somewhere on the left border. He does end up getting spotted by our friendly carrier's planes, and as I look over in that direction, our carrier is actually on a permaflood, so he does end up dying, which is really unfortunate. There's not actually a whole lot of time left on the clock, and the Kansas isn't exactly the fastest ship, so getting over there will definitely take some time. Our friendly carrier planes are going in for a drop. I do check to see how far my firing range actually is, just so I know how far I actually need to go. Our friendly CV going for a drop on the enemy CV does actually make him turn out, so he is actually creating a little more distance, and it's just going to take me a little longer in order to reach him. I am able to lock onto the Shokaku, however him sailing away will mean that my shells will land short. He is turning in in order to try and dodge some of those torpedoes, and I do take a salvo right at the edge of my firing range, and the salvo is looking pretty good, and I'm thinking I'm going to get a crack in here. However, I get 5 penetrations and 2 overpens that leaves him on a sliver of HP, which is very unfortunate. All I really needed was one citadel, however most of those shells did miss. I think I aimed a little too high considering he was turning in, which this game I had a bunch of poorly aimed shots. And if I simply aimed better, well, I definitely would have done a little more damage and have killed off the enemy CV. Almost a 4k game in the Kansas, 207,000 damage. The ship is definitely able to smash enemy ships, regardless if they are angled or broadside, because of the amount of guns and the fact that it can overmatch a lot. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am using my William Sims Sigma build, which means I am using Andrew Cunningham and Angelo Iacchino as my inspirations in order to get that shell grouping slash sigma value as high as possible. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more and share with your friends or leave a comment down below for any other ships you want to see in the future. But until next time, aloha.